Hi and welcome to our new topic. We're going to start off with organic chemistry, which is a completely new brand of chemistry that we haven't looked at before, um, but it's one of my favourites and let's get started. So this is just a quick rundown of the key points that we need to cover for IB. It'll give you a bit of an idea. This is quite a sizable topic. We're unlikely to finish all of it before our exam, but we're going to see how far we go. So these are the key understandings that we need to have. So make sure you make a point of these kinds of things for definitions and otherwise. The IB expects us to understand what a homologous series is, and we'll define that in um, our coming videos. What the general formula for different families of organic compounds are and how they differ from each other. The structural formulas of organic compounds. So this does mean that we are going to be drawing diagrams and we do need to follow conventions for doing this. Okay, and then a condensed format as well. So we do need to pay attention to what the question is asking us. Structural isomers, which are different variations of the same molecular formula, which we will define. Functional groups. Saturated compounds that contain single bonds only, which is the first family of hydrocarbons that we will be introduced to in organic chemistry. And then unsaturated compounds. We will also take a deep look at benzene in terms of its special structure um, and start to look at this um, molecule in more detail and what it means in terms of us for organic chemistry and how it reacts. For all of these, we are expected to know general formulas as well as specific examples and know how to name each of these different families, the alkanes, alkynes, ketones, alcohols, aldehydes, and carboxylic acids. This is for SL. There is even more for HL. As far as being able to apply this knowledge, those basic skills, you need to be able to explain the trends and boiling points between different members of the same family. And this takes us back to our bonding topic. In particular, you should be looking at intermolecular forces and shapes of molecules in order to be able to best answer these types of questions. We'll be looking at empirical, molecular and structural formulas. So this is going back to topic one that we did in ECP, where we learnt how to deal with um, empirical formulas back then. We will be looking at how to identify the different classes of organic compounds, and there is quite a few that we need to be able to understand. We'll be looking at the identification of different functional groups within larger molecules, constructing 3D models of organic molecules, the application of IUPAC rules. So this is the naming convention that's used internationally or the nomenclature, and this is the only naming convention that we use. Being able to identify primary, secondary, and tertiary carbon atoms in halogenoalkanes and alcohols. And then looking at the discussion of the structure of benzene and physical and chemical evidence. All of this we will look at in terms of structure, properties, and the way that these new compounds that we're learning about interact with each other and react. So just a bit of a review on carbon. So I want you to think about carbon as an atom and the type of molecules it forms. And try and remember the kind of things that you remember about carbon. Hopefully, you will remember that carbon is a molecule that has four valence electrons, and this would be its Lewis dot structure. So it has four valence electrons, which means it is able to form four bonding pairs. So it will often form molecules, as we have seen, as things like CH4, where it has four single bonds. You hopefully will also remember that carbon is able to form bonds to itself, so it can form double bonds or triple bonds. Okay, so it is quite unique in this way, in that single bonds to carbon are the weakest of the covalent bonds. Of course, these are all covalent because carbon does not typically form ions. Okay, so we have single bonds are our weakest covalent bond and our longest. Okay, 
and then we have double bonds which are the next in terms of strength and length and then triple bonds are the strongest. You will have seen this molecule and may recall this molecule as being methane and hopefully you will remember that this is a non-polar molecule that has weak dispersion forces only. We've also talked about carbon in terms of large networks and covalent networks. They are not relevant here. What we do need to remember though is the type of bonds that carbon forms. Okay, that it has four valence electrons and it's happy forming four bonds. This can be with double, single or triple bonds. As long as it has four bonds around the carbon atom. Okay, that when carbon is bonded to hydrogen, it is nonpolar. And all the molecules that we will be looking at here when we're talking about hydrocarbons are made up of carbon and hydrogen, which makes them nonpolar. Okay, so carbon is a nonmetal that forms stable covalent bonds. It's not particularly electronegative, so it has very little difference between hydrogen and carbon in terms of its electronegativity. Okay, the other thing that carbon can do is it can also form ring structures. So because of its ability to form bonds with itself, carbon can actually form bonds in a ring structure, and we will look at some of these uh, a little bit later on. So here this would be a C6 ring structure and this one's actually called cyclohexane and we will look at some of these later on in our journey in organic chemistry. So when we're talking about organic chemistry we are talking about the chemistry of compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen. Okay so everything that we're going to be talking about will contain carbon, hydrogen, it can also contain oxygen and sometimes we will see phosphorus, nitrogen and other trace elements. But largely we're talking about molecules that will contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And the simplest of these are only carbon and hydrogen and we refer to those as hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons are molecules that comp are composed mostly of carbon and hydrogen only. And the first of these that we are familiar with is methane. We have also met things like ethane and propane during some of the other examples throughout this year. They vary in size from very small molecules such as methane to incredibly long chains. So plastics are made up of polymers of carbon and hydrogen atoms, which can be hundreds of atoms long. So typically we're talking about molecules that will take the formula of CH4, C2H6, they are different combinations of single and double bonds, but contain carbon and hydrogen atoms. The lengths of the carbon chain and the number of hydrogen atoms that we see in these molecules from small to large, and the type of bonding that they have between them is a key contributor to the properties of the hydrocarbon. I'd like you to pause the video and think about why this is. You wanna be thinking back to our bonding unit in particular, what determines the melting point, boiling point, and physical characteristics of a co covalent molecule? Once you've had a bit of a think, come back and I'll go through what I consider to be the most important aspect. Okay, hopefully you had a bit of a think about this. And these are some examples here of what we see. So gasoline and fuels are common examples of hydrocarbons. And what we see as we go from things like gasoline to diesel and motor oil and plastics, what you'll hopefully notice is as these molecules are getting larger, they're getting thicker, or in the case of plastics, sometimes even solids. So what we see here is because hydrocarbons are made up of carbon and hydrogen only, they are non-polar molecules. Okay, so if they are non-polar molecules, we are talking that they have dispersion forces only. So if we have molecules that are only 
carbon and hydrogen, then they're going to be nonpolar. The only intermolecular forces between them are going to be weak dispersion forces. And of course, weak dispersion forces increase with the increase in size of the molecule because of the greater number of electrons present for an instantaneous uh, dipole. So as the molecules get larger, they increase the size of the dispersion forces. So we see increased melting points and boiling points, which changes the physical properties of the compounds that we see. So that's an introduction to hydrocarbons. So we're looking at nonpolar molecules consisting of mostly hydrogen and carbon at this stage. When we introduce different functional groups, we'll talk about changes in polarity. But for now, if the, if the molecule is making, made up of only carbon and hydrogen, we're talking nonpolar molecules that vary greatly in size from one to even hundreds of carbon atoms. These carbons connect to each other in a chain, as we saw in the previous slides. Most of these compounds are sourced from crude oil. So they make up our fuels, gas fuels like LPG and methane, petrol, petroleum gas, and also the base products for many plastics and various other things like that. Because we know that crude oil is a limited resource and it's formed from long-term effective heat and pressure on the remains of dead organisms inside the Earth's crust, primarily from large die-off in ocean environments, Organic chemistry is the branch of chemistry that looks at the chemistry of carbon-based molecules. And all this carbon has come from organic or living creatures and plants, largely animals, so plankton and things like that in our oceans from millions and millions of years ago. So we're talking about a branch of chemistry that is closely linked to fossil fuels and, of course, will allow us to talk more in depth about some of the environmental impacts of those as well. So that's our introduction to organic. Um, I will see you in class when we next start our journey on naming the different types of organic